Welcome to Worship Tutorials. I am Bradford. Today we have a new patch for you. It is a high watt custom 20. Uh, this thing is like, it's, it is a box. I don't think I've ever seen an amp actually be a box, like a cube. It is like a cube and it's like this yayish big. It's pretty crazy to see. But the goal was to create a smaller, more portable version of the high watt. So if you have ever been curious, here you go. To me, it's interesting. It doesn't have the chime of a Vox, but it, it kind of has that mid thing going. Um, it is a small amp and it kind of can sound like a small amp, but the way we, you know, we get it mic'd up, we run it through our pre's and we, we capture it and we, we take its soul and place it into the units and it doesn't sound as, as small anymore. So very cool sound, lots of texture. This amp really, like doesn't have a, a super clean sound. So as always, we feel that if you just play with dynamics, you can get cleans. So even playing softly, you're still gonna hear a little bit of that gain, but you can get, you get the cleans if you play quietly. So it's a fun amp. Uh, these are lower output pickups too. So take that into consideration when you're deciding. We thought with the, this amp, and we've done a couple others lately, they're they're known for being more rocking amps. Not necessarily like metal heavy gain, but like higher gain stuff than normal. So we went back to the way we've done things before. Amp is first, all wet effects are post. It keeps things a lot cleaner, especially with an amp like a 20 watt amp. The head of room is just not really there. So it keeps things a little tighter. Also because we can use the amp drive, we can like goose it. So here's where it's at, and then I'll show you where it goes. <laughs> was just the amp drive. I mean, the compressor's on pushing a little bit, but we had to alter the, the compression settings we normally use to kind of allow for the amp to breathe a little bit more. So that's the amp drive. We also included the King of Tone Yellow, always sounds great, on and, or often than on. Really just sounds like, um, it sounds like more gain on the amp. That's what I love about the King of Tone, um, but not as much as the amp drive. So that's cool if you wanted to just keep it real like pure and transparent you wanted just the amp sound king of tone's a great thing to use we threw an 808 on there because we liked what it did but like i mentioned earlier the amp already seems to be pretty mid prominent so the 808 really just kind of sticks it out even more so here it is off and on <laughs> It. You get chunky on that. Uh, subtle hall, dynamic hall, those are our usual suspects. So good. Eighth delay, real quick, and you know, it just kind of, if you want, you can almost use it like slap backy, but like you, you kind of don't want slap back because you got verb, and like slap back is kind of sort of used for verb pretty often, you know, that kind of idea. The uh, approach, so. So it's there. Dotted eighth. When we do these patches with the amp first and then wet effects, we can use some of the higher DSP 
delays. And in this one, I believe, we use tape and vintage digital. We're not always able to do that depending on the amp if we do like two instances. So they have more texture. Uh, dual delay as well, set to quarter and dotted eighth. And tremolo and chorus. We could typically get both of these in every patch. Nailed it, there it is. So you know how we do things. Uh, our snaps are always in this vein, at least the bottom four, clean, drive, a little more drive, drive plus, even more drive, PNW lead, you know, that delay, reverb, big stuff to get you uh, Brian's favorite lead tone. <laughs> One thing of note on that is we're using the amp drive and the 808, so it's super creamy. It rips. Um, but yeah, we do things pretty much the same up top too. Ambient clean, trim clean, 80s clean. Um, if you wanted to, you could like drop one of those sounds if you didn't want to, and then like you make it a rock lead and use it to be amp drive. If you hang out in snap land, making snaps are pretty easy. I'd suggest learning how to do that. It is really simple. You just go to the number and you go back to stop mode and turn off what you want off and turn on what you want on. And then uh, you may be able to change the name of the stomp. You can change the name of the snap on the unit, but just use your editor. Anyways, uh, we have this as always, single coil humbucker options. Uh, choose what just sounds best. And then if you feel like there's one, there's something too much of something, look at the EQ, see if that thing you think there's too much of is what's cranked and then remove it. So always remove stuff. But if something's too bright, uh, and you realize that like the low end or the high end is not really there, then it, you can't really take something away that's not really there, right? So then add a low end, that kind of thing. Um, just experiment. You're not going to break nothing. Uh, this is available for Podgo, HX Stomp, and uh, Helix, which I'm saying last because we want Podgo users to feel loved and included. Uh, we always, always, always make patches for Podgo, if and it's possible. They're always, there's occasionally limitations, but there's that, and also if you are hap you happen to be watching this and you don't use any Line 6 products, it is available for Kemper and the Fractal units as well. Links for everything are below. Thanks for checking all this out. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time.